Hey, good morning, Bow and Mud for Jesus. Just wanted to get on here and uh, I've never shown my testimony, so God led me to do it, so I did it. And that's what's coming up next. Uh, overlooked the video, it's just me going down the highway. I didn't want, uh, I'm in my work uniform, so I didn't want my uniform being on there, so it's not my face you're looking at. You're still hearing my voice though. But uh, anyway, enjoy. <laughs> Anyway, neither here nor there. Wasn't long after that, uh, a movie come out called The Dirt Bike Kid. I'm not gonna elaborate. If you wanna see it, it's an awesome movie, go watch it. But if you've seen it, then you know what I'm talking about. Well, that got me driven to wanting a dirt bike. And so my dad found an old used Kawasaki kind of a in-between, I guess it was an enduro bike from back in the 70s. It was blue. It had a headlight, signal light, horns, chain driven, but it was built like a dirt bike and would run. It was a 100. And I don't remember my age. It was first ATV or whatever that had a clutch. So that was something that I had to learn. Uh, I want to think it was one down and four up, something of that nature. Anyway, that's where I started. And it's as a child, I, you know, I got bigger and better toys as I could and uh, loved it. Well, later in life, I bought the very first Sportsman 500 Polaris four wheel drive four wheeler. And went to ride. This was their first one that was that size. It was the first one with the independent suspension. And needless to say, that 
they were very light in the front end but yet very heavy all around they were not very well made for trail riding the way i like to trail ride and i ended up i was going up a hill with it and i don't mean like just hill climbs i was going up a trail that was a hill and it was so light on the front end it come back over on top of me and i went end over end down the side of this hill broke my back in two places t11 and t12 say all that to say this I grew up in church I was very fortunate enough that my parents had me in church even as a young young age even when my parents split they divorced one went one way and one went the other um, my dad still kept me in church and that's I'm very thankful for that and I say all that to say this you know I've had God driven I guess he, he's been driving my life. I got saved at a young age, a very young age. I was in Lakeview Baptist School where they attempted to send me for a couple of years, but it was too, it cost too much to keep me there. So I went back to public schools. But anyway, that's where I, I found I found Jesus there. And it, it's been a rough ride, I tell you. It's been a very rough ride. Don't, don't let anybody tell you once you're saved that it's an easy ride. I'm actually gonna say it's, I'm going to compare this to trail riding. You just bought your first 900 Razor Trail Edition, the 50 inch model, which I did, by the way. That was my first Razor. And the very first trail system you unload at is Winrock, Tennessee. And it was for us. And you are tackling these trails for the first time but i'm here to tell you it was rough and hard and it was a, a, a mind changing experience man i was we thought we were gonna Sorry, die. Jamie, I mean, Jamie, okay. we thought we were gonna die like every five minutes because it was just that intense for us because when i had my wreck in 03 on the four on the four-wheeler I haven't gotten back on anything until 26 state. So that's kind of what I'm comparing Christianity to. I don't really want to call it Christianity. I'll get into that at a later, at a later video. But uh, when I first started my walk with God, it, 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 it was like that. And be honest with you, it is still like that in a lot of ways. It is not hard. I mean, correction, I mean, life is not easy once you dedicate your life to God because the devil it comes at you, it comes at you, comes at you in every means possible. It don't matter what it is. And once you learn to read that, you'll understand. But you, you won't never learn that until you get a personal relationship with Jesus. But uh, getting back to my main story here. We bought our Razor in 2016. Me and my wife did. And I was so thankful, you know, I'm like, you know, God, I'm getting getting back into a passion that I grew to love that I had been away from for so long. And uh, don't get me wrong, I didn't get totally out of the game. I just swapped to vehicles. And, you know, I had several four-wheel drive vehicles that I built and that we used around. Now, I didn't do any kind of rock crawling. I was more of a mud guy back in the day and done a lot of mud riding and trail riding around Prentice County we played a game called rabbit but anyway i finally got the nerve and wanted to get back into the atv world so we did and it, it was a struggle for for my wife and i but we we bit the bullet and bought one knew nothing about them so our first purchase was 2016 polaris razor 900 trail 50 inch edition and we got to looking around on the internet and the first park we found that seemed to be like the five star everybody wanted to go to was Windrock. The second one we found was somewhere on the Louisiana, Arkansas, Texas border-ish area. But uh, from all the reviews and stuff that we read, it was nothing but a big party. And, and 
I'm, I don't want to be a part of all that. You know, that there's a, in my opinion, there's a time for a party, and it's not all the time. And I have later learned that a lot of ATP partiers at these parks party all the time, and that's not, I'm not for, I'm, I can't do that. You know, if, if you want to drink that much, that's your business. Uh, eight, zero, I'm not perfect by no means. I've I drank alcohol eight, five, most of my adult eight, life. I didn't drink any as a as a school person, but you know, I did. I did drink. Uh, I will occasionally still have a drink, and I'll tell you why I do. But uh, I limit myself now to, to twice a year. I limit to have a few drinks on my birthday and a few for New Year's. And if there's something very special that comes up that calls for a short, small type celebration, then I will have a few. And, and the reason I base, base my life that way is because Jesus turned water into wine for a celebration. And to me, if you can do things moderately, and not let it control you from the way I interpret the Bible. It's not a sin to drink it. It's a sin. The drunkenness is the sin. But I'll get into all that on another time. Like I said, this is just kind of telling my testimony. So let me get back to the story. So we got the 900 trail. We chose Windrock to be our first destination park. And it was called Fall Jamboree. We was reading up on that, and the reason we chose it was because it was uh, they do a haunted trail ride. You know, me and my wife love haunted houses, and stuff like that. And, uh, so we're like, hey, cool, that might be something interesting, you know. So we we opted for that. We we know that they do a family outing, and they do a lot of family events for that. They was like side-to-side -side and four-wheeler motorcycle type little races and it was mainly set up for the kids there was several adult games like that also they took in a lot of money and gave away a lot of money and prizes to these kids and that just that sounded good and it was it really was and i'll get more in depth later on that and they had you know they showed that they'd done nice music live music and, and fed you at the end so we're like yes yeah, let's do that so we got our tent we got a big agus tent it's a nice big old wilderness type tent and we head off to wind rock mountain and we got a tent spot and we signed up for all this stuff to go watch and there was a guided trail ride we were late getting to it. and you know I believe everything happens for a reason and I believe it's God's reason not mine and he knew where my heart was he just hasn't hasn't yet it hasn't clicked in my head yet what we were gonna do where we were gonna go with this or what I was wanting to do with it later but uh, we had a Christian flag and I put a Christian flag on the back of my razor with a piece of PVC pipe. And we were there. Anyhow, we were late for the guided ride and missed it. So we were like, huh, we didn't know what else to do. And we had tried the trails, tried going up a few of the trails, just us. And we were very intimidated. Very intimidated. Laugh at you as you must, and yes, I I kind of feel that way now after been doing it since 2016. But uh, anyhow, we met another couple that had also missed the guided ride. That's Bill and Debbie, and we just kind of sat there and kind of talked. Come to realize, he was a preacher, and uh, Debbie was a preacher's wife, and they're a good bit older than us. I'm not going to get into how old, but I'm going to tell you that ATV riding, there is no age limit. Let me put it at that. And she was in her own Razor, and he was in his own Can-Am 
commander. And we're like, huh, a husband and wife ride separate. Me and my wife looked at each other. They must not get along very well, but love the hobby so they continue to go. Anyway, that's just a little joke that me and Kay first thought. Later to learn if that ain't the case. Independence, maybe. <laughs> but anyhow, they have been going there their entire life, and they were they were from Sevierville, Tennessee, the Pigeon Forge area. So Winrock's just a hop, skip, and a jump for them. So they've been going to Winrock for many, many, many moons. And said, hey, we will guide y'all around. We're like, awesome. You know, they're taking taking us in under their wing. We were like, this is an older couple. They're gonna be taking it easy. This might be somebody we might, you know, try to want to ride with. Lo and behold, they ride like maniacs. Yes, I said maniacs, Bill and Debbie. For us new people, anyway. We could not keep up. And they were on the very first trail they took us to. We headed over. They took us to the prison. The very first trail we turned down, we almost turned over because we weren't wide enough. <laughs> and let me tell you, 50 inches on some of those trails doesn't fare very well. So just heads up if you're a wind rock or wanting to be a wind rock rider, go on and get a full size machine. It'll just be safer in the long run. Yes, you can do it in a 50 because we rode all over that mountain. Oh, and in the last several years in the 50 years before we upgraded. But I say this to, to go back to where I was at. Ended up, you know, I uh, got in my mind, I wanted to start a group called Mudden for Jesus. And they had Jesus stickers all over their machine. So they weren't scared to show who they loved and followed. And I had my Christian flag on the back. So I said, why not? You know, this we might grow into something from this. And it has. We have been going now, this is 2024. We've only missed one or two rides at Windrock with them. And our group went from just me and Kayla and Bill and Debbie to a whole bunch. And it's it's, it's a blessing to see there's many others out there that love to be a part of the ATV world, but love Jesus and ain't scared to show it. And it, it has been an awesome ride. It really has. Uh, but getting back into the rest of my testimony, to, you know, to say your walk with, with God is not going to be easy. But you need, if, if you love him, if you truly have a relationship with him, then you will want other people to have that same relationship. And I'm gonna go off into another topic. And what I mean by that is love, okay? God tells us to love everyone and to hate no one. You know, and to hate someone is a sin. But he also says, you must forgive and let me tell you even your best friend is gonna make you mad from time to time and it may be more way more than once and you you've got to forgive him because God tells us to it's a sin to hate and if you don't forgive somebody eventually it grows into hate people it really does and that that'll probably be another story later but if you grow mad at somebody and you don't forgive them, yes, it will turn to hate. And once you have reached that hate that hate area for this person, it's hard to forgive them. It takes a whole lot of praying and studying and understanding and talking to other people before you can kind of break that wall back down. Because once you build that hate wall, that hate wall is strong. And it gets stronger by the day. Stronger and stronger until you start tearing it back down. So you don't need to get build that wall because it's so hard to get back. But uh, he also tells us in the Bible, you know, don't, don't uh, confuse yourself. 
you must love your neighbor as you love your brother he also he tells us in there if you love your brother but hate your neighbor you're deceiving yourself because you can't hate and love at the same time that's what i get out of that and i'm here to tell you you're not going to have a relationship with jesus if you have hate in your heart so if you want to have and continue that relationship you've got to get that hate out of you and i'm not saying that you once you've been saved and you're covered under his blood that you're gonna lose your salvation because you all of a sudden now you're hating somebody that's not what i'm telling you what i am telling you is that you're going to lose that personal relationship with him. He's going to fall back. He's not going to be there with you, talking to you every day and day in and day out because you're doing something that he can't stand. And, you know, God hates sin. And hate is a sin. And in, and in my opinion, it's a major sin to him. So that's one thing, you know, to try to work on. There's many other sins out there that are to me in my opinion more major than others that he would hold a little higher standing but you want to keep that personal relationship with Jesus and he will continue that with you and you will fight those battles and he will fight them with you if you have him in there with you in your heart and you stay with him daily and I don't mean just you know at night we were we were trained to to pray before we go to bed we were trained to pray and bless our food you know and a lot of times that's the only prayer people do and that that is not a personal relationship at all it's kind of like a wife that you don't have anything to do with so if you go and get married but yet y'all have nothing to do with each other but at the end of the day y'all go sleep and maybe have a dinner or a supper or a breakfast every once in a while you know that's not a personal relationship with that person you're to be active with this person all the time that's a personal relationship you know i, I constantly i'm constantly talking to god throughout the day you know my days ain't perfect by no means so i, I have to stay i have to stay on him so he'll stay on me to keep me going uh, I'm also a state law enforcement officer and it's it's hard to try to keep that personal relationship and and work around the public if you've ever worked around the public you know what I'm talking about but uh, being in this position has also gave me uh, lots of opportunities to share but I don't push it because you know I, I I'm not gonna push anything I, if, if, if the book if somebody opens that book I will go there I will do that in a heartbeat because God tells me to. Uh, but anyway, back to my story, what I'm trying to say. You want to keep a pause. All right, video number two to where I picked up from. Anyway, you want that personal relationship with God because you're going to constantly, you're going to sin every day. There's no way around it. And God tells that in the Bible. There was only one human that walked this earth that was sin free and that was Jesus and the only reason he could do that is because he is God he is almighty he can do what he wants except sin so you need your constant walk with him daily, day in and day out, sun up and sun down in order to keep that personal relationship. But that's the whole reason that I started Mudden for Jesus. And Mudden for Jesus has grown quite a bit. We have been very blessed. We wanted to be able to have stickers and t-shirts to put out there to show. So, and so I started a YouTube channel i started the facebook page i started the instagram just to show you know hey look people love jesus and, and can do these things also and if that's something you want to be a part of then here it is 
we uh, we're showing our love for him and that we're not scared to show our love for him in this day and time it's getting to where doing that actually might be a crime but uh, we were very fortunate I started me and my wife sat down and and, des and was trying to design a, a sticker a logo for mud and for Jesus and I got to look it on Facebook and found a guy up in New York that does stickers and letters and blah 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 and I can't remember his name at the moment I will look it up for for my video later but he has done all of my stickers for my my trailer for my car and for the mud and for Jesus stickers that we hand out and we done that out of our own pocket no big deal don't care we were trying to help sell the stickers a dollar a piece to kind of just help replenish them you know so we can continue to do it i have given out bukus you know if somebody asks i'll go hey yeah we, you know we we'd like a dollar a piece for them it just helps us to replenish them uh, not looking for any kind of profit there also uh, the videos we purchase everything and do it ourselves. Uh, I kind of rely on other riders to kind of video with their phones, you know, and I get a lot of video from them. Nobody sponsors our videos at all. We do, I have done several reviews on items for razors and other things. It's things that I've personally bought and put on my razor and I just like for people to see and get the truth on what's out there. So, I mean, if you're scrolling YouTube and you want to know about this certain particular item and you know, there's people that do these reviews, I'm putting a 100% a honest review out there about it. Uh, we totally 100% do not get any money from anybody. So I just kind of wanted to throw that in there as well. It kind of gives us some video content and the more content I put out there from what I've learned is from algorithms if I said that correctly. And in order for our channel to be put out there on the mainstream, you know, we have to have viewers, we have to have likes, we have to have comments, whether good or bad, the comments, I, I try to leave them there unless they're vulgar. If they're vulgar, I will take them down. And there has been several vulgar messages. There are some haters out there, and I was, but I do remove those. I just don't want to leave that kind of language out in the public, sorry. As uh, long as there's no vulgar language in it, then by all means, if you want to talk bad about us, talk bad. I will leave it there. I don't care. That helps the algorithms put our videos and stuff up front. So by all means, please, if you see any post from Mud and for Jesus and you want to help get it out there, that's the best thing you can do is like it and comment it. Comment anything, you know, whatever it may be. Share it. Uh, subscribe to the channel, subscribe, like the pages, subscribe to the pages. Uh, we don't make any money on new to, on YouTube. If you're a YouTube person or know anything about it, you have to have like several thousand subscribers to even start getting any kind of funding. And that's not what we're looking for. If we're blessed to ever get there, then we will figure out a way to keep that money going for the channel and for God. It won't be for us at all. Um, I'll say that to say this. We were blessed to be able to get some t-shirts. We designed some t-shirts off of our logo and I called several people to help and I said, hey, we're putting together a t-shirt for our group. If you wanted to sponsor it, we would put your logo on the back. And that's how we got our t-shirts paid for. And we are very thankful for all the companies that wanted their logo on the back of a Jesus shirt. That shows me that, hey, they're not afraid of Jesus. And they, that, I'm sure they all know, hey, this is just a little group. It's not even going to be that much advertising to them. But yet, they were willing to put their hard-earned company money in to help us get some t-shirts made and so we we got all of our t-shirts 
printed and done and we sell those and the only reason we sell them we sell them at cost to be able to replenish our t-shirts that way we will always be able to have those t-shirts i don't have to keep coming back to companies going hey we, we're going to try to make some more t-shirts do you want to re-sponsor i don't want to be that guy you know one day i may end up having to do that we've given a lot of t-shirts away um we don't have a lot of sizes like in double X, triple X, or smalls because during when we got them was during the COVID phase, there was a lot of sizes we could not get. So yes, there's a lot of those we do not have. If you would like to purchase a t-shirt, you know, give us a ring, we'll do what we can. Uh, we don't mind shipping them. We have shipped several. We've had people privately contact us and go, hey, we thank you for what you were doing. We'd like to buy this many t-shirts, you know, and if it's, if it's several t-shirts, you know, not like one or two, but if you get four or five, we'll cover the shipping just to get it to you. That's no big deal. Uh, because you know, that's, that's, that helps out. That helps out a lot to be able to put back into the group. We don't charge membership at all. We, we're, we're not that kind of group. We're just, loving people that like to hang out we meet at different parks throughout the united states i mean we've been all over no i don't get to go to all of them but my, a lot of people out of our group do that's still our group i'm not the group jesus is the head of this group almighty i just helped put it together that's all i did and i just kind of run everything on the back side uh the group runs the group the entire group you know as they go places as they wear our t-shirts they put our stickers on their rides they video and post to the page that's that's our group and it's 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 been a good one we've got several people from all over we got people from indiana uh tennessee arkansas georgia florida i mean we've got several people that try to meet up with us, you know, and ride with us every once in a while. Uh, we had some folks from Germany come ride with us last year. It's, I mean, we're we're slowly growing, and, and that's a good thing. That, that's a blessing for God. But I'll say all of that to get back to my main story. To have a personal relationship with God, you're going to have to be saved and there's only one way to be saved and that's Jesus and let me go on and tell you the reasons first God made man and woman Adam and Eve at the beginning he tells us in the Bible he made us after his own image now what that means I have no idea I don't know if God looks like us or what? You know, hey, we'll find that out eventually. He may have two arms and two legs and a head. I have no clue. But he made us in his own image, and, and I think that could be interpreted in several different ways. So I don't take that literally in that point. And he formed us from the dust. From the dust of the ground, he formed our bodies, the bones all from the dust but what made us come alive he breathed his breath and made life well I say that to tell you this when you die your body is going back to the dust your body will not be in heaven your body will not be in hell but what he breathed in us will. And that's our soul. He gave us that living soul. That soul will never die. Let me repeat that. Your soul, which is you, will never die. So when your body dies, and your body's gonna die, because he tells us in, in the Bible that we will. Once the man is appointed to die 
your body is going to die and go back to the dust of the ground. But however, your soul will continue living. Now it is up to you to where your soul goes. God opened this book. I'm putting this in a different term for you. He, he's created a book. He is the main author, but you are the co-author. He's given you a whole lot of guidelines to write your book, but it's solely up to you. You write your book. How your book ends, it is all up to you. He gave you the free will to do so. But the guidelines is, he gave us two places to go. When our body dies, our soul lives on. He created a place called heaven. And in heaven is where his people will be. And then he created hell. Hell is the place his people will not be. And the reason he created that, Lucifer was an angel in heaven with God and decided that he was more powerful than God. And that's where the devil was come where the devil comes from. Lucifer is the devil. He was the angel of music. And I do believe that's why music is so touching to people. And there's a lot of music and in this world that can drive you the wrong way or the right way. I do believe music is very powerful. But he created hell for Lucifer. And God created heaven for God and his people. So people, if you want to follow God, and you want to go to heaven to be with God, and to live in that place, and I'll later video will go into detail what heaven looks like, and to what hell looks like also. But you must be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And in order to do so, you must believe in Him. You must believe everything that Bible says because it is true. I believe every word of it. And he tells us in that Bible, in, for, in order for us to be saved, we must believe that he sent his only son, Jesus, onto this earth to be a human. He sent him here to live in our ways. In the Old Testament, in order to be forgiven a sin, you had to slain that perfect lamb every year. And when Jesus came, he sent Jesus to be our lamb. So you must believe that he was born of a virgin on this earth, lived as a man for 33 years, he walked and preached the Word of God, His Father. He was crucified at the end for our sins. It was meant to be. It was predestined. He had to die in order for us to go to heaven. He rose after He died on the third day because death could not keep him. He rose. Then he went back to heaven to be on the right hand of the Father, awaiting for our arrivals. He is there to be our lawyer for God for our sins that we commit. That doesn't mean you get to live any way you want to live on this earth and we'll get into that later <laughs> but he is our lawyer for when we do when, we, when our body dies and our soul goes to that great judgment there's going to be a judgment you're going to go to this judgment and at that judgment you're going to either be in the Lamb's book of life which is Jesus' book God's going to go, you've done all of these sins, and hes I'm pretty sure he's going to lay every sin you've ever committed out in front of you. 
And then Jesus is going to open up his book and go, look, he belongs with us. He believed in me. I saved him with my spilt blood on that cross. He will be forgiven. That's how I believe that will take place. But if you don't believe, or you choose not to believe, then when God puts you on that throne, or in front of that throne, and starts showing you your sins, you know, the Bible tells us every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess at one point or another that he is God. But at this point, if this is when you're confessing he's your God, you're too late. You're not in Jesus' book. You can't get in Jesus' book at all at this point. You're done. Once your body dies, your chances of being saved is over with. Completely, 100%. And I can go in later on and I will, I will show you some verses that, that teaches that. <laughs> But once your body dies and you're in that great throne, he's either going to be guilty or not guilty. This is in our terms. If you're not guilty, you've been forgiven, you're going to go sit with Jesus. You're going to be in heaven. That'll be your soul. You will get a brand new body, according to the Bible. A perfect body. Okay? Okay. There will be, I believe it will be your soul and body will be combined because it will never die. You will never have to eat. You will never have to drink. You will never have to, to, to do any of that. You'll never be sick. You'll never cry. You'll It will all be joyful from then on out. However, for the unsaved, you're going to be found guilty. You're going to receive your new body as well. I don't believe it's going to be a perfect body. Because it can't be. But that body, you will be sent to hell. Where you will be tormented for eternity. And I mean eternity. It will never quit. Your body and soul will never die. That will be I mean, I don't know how to fathom that other than when I was a child, this was kind of told to me. Imagine at a camp, you're at a campfire. You fall in that campfire for whatever reason. You feel those burns till you can either get out or somebody gets you out. It's going to be like that for eternity. There will be nothing to take for the pain. There will be no Advil, Aleve, Tylenol, morphine, or any of that mess there. There will be nobody to pull you from that fire. You will quench that pain for eternity. So you need to let that set in. Let Think about that. And by all means... Like I said, Jesus left that book up to us to write. So we are writing it daily. You can either write it daily following God or you can write it daily following Satan. If you follow Satan, you now know where you're going to go. If you're following God, you now know where you're going to go. And I say all of this to tell this is love. God tells us to love our neighbors as ourselves. And that don't mean our literal neighbor. Every human on this earth is our neighbor. It don't matter if you're black, white, dark skin, light skin, round eyed or slant eyed. It does not matter. We are all neighbors. We are all created in his form. Therefore, we all have the same opportunities to write our books and end up in the same place with the same happy ending or with the same unhappy ending. 
So you, you think about that. And if it's something that you're, you want to talk about, by all means, call me. My number is not hidden at all. I leave it on the page. Uh, shoot me a text. I don't care. If you want to talk about God or you want to learn about God a little closer or you want me to pray with you, for you, by all means, call me. <clears throat> but this is why I do what I do for Mud and for Jesus. And I'm trying to continually write my book the way that I would think he would enjoy reading. There's a lot of bad parts in there that he ain't going to like. But I, I'd get forgiveness for those. And I go to him. You know, I have... I struggled with pornography a lot when I was younger. The internet come around when I was in high school. I know that makes me sound old if you're a younger person. But the only way we had porn back in my day was go to the store and buy a book or a video. Now it, they made it at your fingertips with the way these phones are. But then it was a keyboard right there. You had it in your own home. So I got addicted to it, and that was one of the hardest things for me to get away from. I done drugs in high school. I smoked cigarettes in high school. I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. I hadn't smoked in years. Even to this day, though, there's still times I go, dang, I wish I had a cigarette right now. But God is still walking with me. There are still times that I want to Pull that up on a computer and look at it. But God is still with me. Thank you, Lord, for that. To me, the drugs, getting away from, from doing drugs in high school was probably the easiest. I guess I just never was addicted to it. But, uh, therefore, I left all of that in my high school days. <clears throat> so I'm telling you, nobody's perfect. You're you're always going to want this or want that because your body is of the world and the world especially right now is going straight up for sin only and it is so hard to, to stay in your walk with God in this world so I, I do believe that the time is drawing nearer to where it's going to be illegal even here in Mississippi to worship God. We saw a lot of that during the first stages of COVID. And that'll be for a whole nother video as well. So if you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, comment, share it. I'm gonna try some gonna try to get some more content other than writing content and give you my takes on the Bible and go from there. So God bless everybody out there. If you want to ride with us, by all means, come on. Get on the page, message us, comment, you know, hey, let us know when you're going to be where. We would like to meet up and ride with y'all. By all means, we welcome everyone. I want to thank each and every member that we have that comes and and, and uh, worships with us and, and enjoys this, this great earth that God gave us to roam. Because, guys, it is, it's beautiful out there. We've been to several parks across the U.S., and they're, they're all beautiful. Uh, as long as people can leave their spray cans and their garbage alone, it'll stay that way. Please stop graffitiing up all this stuff. It might be neat to you, or, but it don't look good. I mean, the big rock at Windrock, when we first went, there was nothing on it. Now it's covered in spray paint. I mean, that's, no. That don't look good. The garbage everywhere, you know, take, get a sacket from somebody. There's a sacket for every company out there. Buy one, put it on your razor and use it. 
you don't have one, use your use your partners or somebody that rides with you. I don't have one, so I use Kathy and Glenn's all the time. Uh, you know, don't don't litter up. If we destroy these parks and these places that these pl people allow us to ride on, they'll eventually shut them down. And if you're gonna drink, drink at your camper or in the passenger seat. Don't drive and drink. We've seen way too many accidents and deaths on the trails just from that alone. There is way much more up there that'll kill you quick enough as it is without adding to your impairment. So, you know, just keep that at your campsite or jump in the passenger seat, by all means. Stay safe out there. God bless you. We all love you. Come back and see us.